Hi, my name is Vera DeMay, and this is my journey. I grew up in a Christian home with strict parents and a performance-based upbringing. I was taught truth. However, it was a list of do's and don'ts, not a relationship with Christ based on grace and love. I went to camps, revival meetings, even attended basic youth conflicts, and then later women's retreats, all coming home from a high to the valley. I spent most of my life trying to perform like a Christian, but I felt like I never quite got it. My husband, Doug, and I moved to Middleton from Boise in 2016. I married a believer, and my husband and I have tried to raise our children to know and love God. We came here in 2017 from Cloverdale Church of God in Boise, where we had been attending for about four years. We knew Pastor Brian and Maureen as pastor was youth, the youth pastor there, and then he became associate pastor. We heard his first sermons, and his last act at Cloverdale was marrying our son and, and his wife. So coming here was a natural transition. And since we were both involved in ministry at Cloverdale, it was, we were not required to take the journey classes at that time. Another factor in choosing OTC was the fact that we needed to make our own friends. Having made the move from California in 05, we lived where we lived for over 30 years. We knew what we needed to do. We quickly found an adult Sunday school class and felt very welcome there. At that time, the church was mostly made up of older people. Today, we stay because of pastors preaching. The core values and how the journey classes integrates those and shows us the way to move forward in our faith. I got heavily involved in women's ministries and leadership. My heart for the, the women in, of the church was that every woman would find her place in women's ministries, that no woman, woman would feel like she was, did not have a friend here. However, something was not quite right inside of me. Each time Pastor Brian spoke, it was like he was preaching just to me. I knew there was something that had to change. My priorities were all out of whack. There was no personal time with God, no praying, no meditation, no time to hear from God. I was busy, busy, busy. Busy outside my home and my family, my husband being at the bottom of the list. We were approaching our 50th wedding anniversary, and I realized that I had bought into the world's viewpoint of marriage, religion, and relationship. With every effort on my part to be more like Christ and to put on the care or to put on the character of Christ, I failed miserably. The responses to life's problems was not asking God what he wanted me to learn from this first and praying about it. Rather it was panic, anxiety, not sleeping, or it was my husband's fault. I was independent, competent, and in charge of my life. Why was I so inconsistent? I had truth, God's word, which I did not get into very regularly, and skills that allowed me to be in ministry, but no relational way to love Jesus and receive his love. I was an immature Christian. I had not matured into a loving attachment with Jesus who transforms my character and identity. I was stuck. My relational circuits were off. I just wanted to make a problem, person, or feeling go away. My mind would lo get locked onto something, and I would not let go. At times, I just wanted to get away. When presented with a problem, I tried hard to fix others. Why was this all happening? Why did I feel like this at this point in my life? My attitude was, now is, it's my turn to do the things that I have not gotten to do yet. My excuse was I was diagnosed in 2002 with Parkinson's. And although I have enjoyed many years with this disease, stayed active and involved in the Parkinson's community, but there's a time coming when the disease would take much over much of what I enjoy doing now. And that time is getting closer. Slowly, God began to reveal more and more of what I needed to let go of. Again, through people, Pastor Brian's sermons, 
personal Bible reading and circumstances, I began to change, but it was hard. I knew it was time for me to step down from women's ministries. My husband had told me that two years earlier. My closest friends had told me that, but I couldn't. Lord, I can't give up my leadership position. Who would take over? That is not his, your concern, he replied. Leave that to me. I've got that covered. I had been given a devotional book that's called Jesus Calling. And while I didn't open it every day, every day that I did read it, it applied exactly to the situation I was facing that day. And it has never failed me on that. This year, January 2020, my prayer was, please, God, show me what I need to let, let go of. And then if that was not enough, March 15th, the COVID virus came crashing in on us. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't believe, and I'm not saying that God brought this about just to change little old me or to teach me something. And then on top of that, I injured my right knee, and I have been dealing with that since March. That was it. The end of my choices were gone. I had nothing to do. My plate was clean. During those months of confinement, I learned a lot about myself. Every time I attempted to divert and take a different road, something would happen. What is going on? I asked myself and God. He answered with, just trust me. It didn't take long before I realized there was still something more. You see, God cannot bring about character change with, with sin, unconfessed sin. I needed to deal with some hurts, habits, and hangups, another nice word for sin, that had taken a stronghold in my life years ago. An attitude that, yes, although I was saved, I needed to take care of myself, my needs, my life here on earth was mine to flesh out. An attitude of independence, ignoring parts of scripture that I didn't like, defiance and manipulation when I didn't get the things I wanted my way, I could go on and on. But that isn't what's important here. When God called me out of the darkness I was living in, I have be began experiencing more joy, appreciation, and a feeling of freedom. And I'm thankful that God has been gentle with me and has not revealed everything to me at once. This summer, my husband and I started the journey classes. And it was through my journey here at OTC that I am learning the steps to spiritual maturity. Pastor Brian, thank you for your consistency in preaching God's word, giving us the tools to grow into spiritual maturity. I love how you bring your core values into your sermons. Be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. That was popular long years ago. That is applicable to me today. My journey is not finished yet. Working through the journey classes, the next step for me is perhaps become a mentor or participate in some way that keeps my priorities in check and on, on the right track. The opportunities are limitless. As you can see, there's no point in which your journey ends. Each one of us, as long as God gives us life and breath, can find a place where we can serve God and each other. Pastor Brian asked us a few Sundays ago what, what kind of church we were, and the key is love, God's love, is poured out to us through Jesus. It is with that, his love that we love each other, and by this love for each other, we let the world know what it's like to be a Christian. The journey is not over until God calls us home. In the meantime, we look for opportunities to serve and love others. My name is Vera DeMay, and this is my journey.